Right. So let's talk about Snowflake scripting and why they call it Snowflake scripting and not necessarily SQL stored procedures. Okay. So what we're talking about in Snowflake scripting is that we get to, we have the ability now to write procedural code inside of Snowflake. We can create these little blocks of procedural code and these blocks, these, they become the building blocks for stored procedures and they can become very complex or they can be fairly simple as, as you'll see as we go as we go through these. So the thing is with these uh, procedural blocks, we, we can use them as anonymous runnable blocks where we can actually not in a stored procedure, but in Snowflake, and you'll see this when we get into the demo, you can actually create some of these blocks and we can run them in in the UI as an actual block, a procedural block of, of code, and, or we can wrap them into a stored procedure. So let's talk a little bit about the blocks. Uh, over here on the left, you can see we've got our long little uh, uh, group here, our Snowflake scripting code block with our little curly brace. So we've got two things that ha that are required for our block. We have to have a begin and we have to have an end. That's that's required for our block. The, all the other stuff is not required, but there's lots of cool things that we can do. So in the scripting, we can add a declare a variable declaration with a declare statement above the block, above any of the blocks. So we could add that. Inside of the block, we can add additional blocks. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, we can do branching, we can do if, we can do case statements, we'll talk about those, uh, the, the branching functionality. We can do looping, so for loops, while loops, repeat loops, loop loops, so some really cool stuff that we can do there. Um, with with the loops, we've got some termination um, uh, th ways that we can terminate, you know, within the looping construct, we can break or we can do a continue, so we've got that functionality, procedural code. We've got variable assignments. We can define variables outside of the begin statement, outside of the block in the declare statement, but then we can also assign them inside of the block. But when we assign them inside of the block, we have to use the let syntax. So let variable A equal something, and so we, we need to do that. We also can do cursor management inside of the block. So we can open a cursor, we can fetch a cursor, we can close a cursor, so we can use cursors which again, like they say, you know, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Well, cursors are, that's the, the, the meat and potatoes of what we're gonna do here, but we're gonna talk about some of the things that we wanna do actually in the cursor and some of the things that we wanna do not in the cursor. So there's some really important things there and we'll get into those. We can raise exceptions, we can return values. We're gonna talk a lot more about that in, in a moment um, with the types of values that we can return and then we can do some exception handling and then we've got the end of our blocks. Hey folks, thanks for checking out this cut from our broadcast. To see the full show, click on the link in the video description. Also, check out our learning center, which has white papers, events, live streams, and short explainer videos on a wide range of data management topics. And of course, if you like our content, please share it on LinkedIn. That really means a lot to us. Thanks again for checking us out, and we hope to see you in our next broadcast.